Good evening and welcome to the Broward Metropolitan Planning Organization's E-Town Hall. Let's talk transportation. I'm Jade Alexander, your moderator for tonight's discussion, and we thank you so much for joining us. Investing in our future, who can argue with that, right? It's what we choose to invest in and where the money comes from that creates the challenges. In the future of transportation, we've talked about all aboard Florida, which is connecting central Florida all the way down to Miami. Talked about the wave, which is going to connect to uh, downtown all aboard Florida. Uh, we have future connections planned to the airport and to the seaport. So when you start seeing that the um, all of our major transportation systems, airport, seaport, and interstates, um, and now you have trains starting to connect all through Florida, the circulators get into the community around, I think is going to create a powerful brand. Where we are is that uh, if we're not talking about how we're funding our needs, we're almost not having a discussion about transportation. And so we really do need the public to engage their public officials, the business community to also engage and to have the conversation about priorities and how to get our priorities funded. Just to give you an, an idea on the on the port, and uh, you know, De Debbie, uh, Congressman Wasserman Schultz, and myself, we've been working very closely with the county commission on this uh, issue to expand Port Everglades because uh, there's going to be a, a uh, widening of the Panama Canal, which means uh, there are going to be very very large ships that are going to be bringing cargo up the coast, and if you don't have the depth and the width to bring those ships in, they're going to pass you by. And so Fort Lauderdale, which is really the biggest uh, cargo uh, port, uh, port in, in uh, Florida, are going to lose out a lot of business. Broward MPO is currently in the process of updating our 20-year plan. And so we've recognized that we have a lot more needs in the community than we have funds to achieve. So we have to make some hard decisions about what goes first, what gets funded, and what doesn't. We've recognized the need for improved transit service, increasing transit service, different community circulators, and sometimes the funds aren't there. So one of the questions that may be coming up in the future is how do we look at getting more funding for these options? Basically, when everybody pulls together, you're able to leverage uh, much greater resources, not just public resources, of course, but private resources um, that you would not otherwise be able to avail yourself to. Uh, and so we're not talking about just transportation, but better transportation. Um, you know, closer to housing, closer to amenities, services. When I first was elected to Congress, I, I represented downtown Fort Lauderdale. Now Congresswoman Frankel does, and we've worked together, uh, me in the beginning part of the decade and, and, and since, and, uh, and Congresswoman Frankel since she joined Congress, to make sure that we had the majority of those funds for that streetcar uh, covered by the federal government. This is a really important public-private partnership. Uh, it's important to note that downtown business owners have voted to actually tax themselves in order to provide funding for this. But if we start to establish that, that streetcar downtown and then spread it over the next 20 years, really, uh, out, out, out to the west, and we have an easy way for people to move back and forth and not get in their car, then that's the kind of investment that we can make. But it's going to require resources. Because when you really talk about where we get our current funding from, it's actually from the gas tax. And while we've been wildly successful at having cars that have l higher gas mi uh, uh, miles per gallon ratings, that's actually been a negative thing on the revenues coming in to pay for our transportation system. And so that pure focus, we can't keep doing what we've been doing and relying on a gas tax to pay for the improvements, complete streets, the bus system, port improvements, all the things that are necessary to keep our uh, economy going where it should be. When we're talking about federal funding, we're talking about funding from the state for transportation, we can't forget that um, primarily the funding for our transportation is paid through the fare box recovery, as well as the um, gas tax and the um, property taxes. And what we're looking at in Broward County is that we're going to have a projected in 10 years a $382 million deficit. The gap between what we know we can fund and what people are saying they want is what we have to fill. And the, and the significance of what we're doing with this conference today, this telephone conference, and, and uh, speak up Broward is for people to tell us what they want and they're willing to pay for. Uh, we know we can't do everything, but we want the input is essential. Public input to this process is essential.